Let's just call this an inventory explosion and months of inventory continue to creep up, making a softer and softer market for home buyers. And it's not just the steady inventory increases in the condo market either. The single family market made a big move. And that new pending to new listings ratio that we track, well, it's flashing some warning signs in the single family market, that is. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do a quick interest rate update and we're going to talk about some relevant current events. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then nope, I'm here to help. The quick highlight reel, as you know, we buy houses all over Massachusetts for cash and in as is condition. Reach out if that's what you're looking for. We have officially launched our purchase power plan where you can actually pay for our services by the hour. This can save home buyers possibly tens of thousands of dollars. Reach out if you're looking to buy a house and won't want to save a small fortune in fees. And for sellers, we're actually now piloting a seller program where you guessed it, Pay us by the hour in order to sell your house. The pilot program will only consist of three sellers. So if you're interested, then please reach out to me directly. Let's jump into the single family market stats. And there it is. There were 3,968 single family houses on the market in the state of Massachusetts. And we now have 17.4% more homes on the market than today, just 28 days ago. We would have to go back to the week of December 4th in order to find the time when there was actually more inventory on the market than today. Now, the inventory gap widening is starting to get aggressive. Next week, it's going to be really interesting as each week we've seen a huge jump in inventory right before Memorial Day weekend. Now, will that trend continue? Big question that we're soon going to get an answer to. But we now have 633 more houses on the market when compared to the same week last year. And 825 more houses on the market today than compared back in today in 2022. It's a very strong week for new listing activity in the single family market. And this is where it's making the difference for the inventory increases. This week, we listed 1,369 single family homes in the state of Massachusetts. This is 173 units or 14.5% more than the same week back in 2023. That's a big week. That was a big number. And the four week rolling average is 1,190 units. Meanwhile, under agreements, they were up, but not by a crazy amount. Next week's numbers are going to be very interesting because this week we've got 1,110 single family homes under agreement. Now, this week, that's 55 units or 5.2% more homes under agreement than the same week last year. We put 1,055 single family houses under agreement. Now, that four week rolling average, that's 929 units. So, when compared to last year's market, new listings were up by 14.5%, while under agreements were up by 5.2%. And here is where I'm starting to think that I may need to throw that worry flag because we had 1,110 units that went under agreement this week, which is compared to 1,212 new listings from two weeks ago. This means our pending new listing ratio was 91.6%. This is compared to 93.3% last week and 95.9% two weeks ago. Now, the average for the last four weeks is 92.3%. And this is compared to weeks five through eight, which was 100.4%. There were 776 single family homes that went under agreement last week for an average sales price of $841,000 and a median sales price of $680,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year went by 34.5% as there were 577 single family homes that sold uh, last year for that average sale price of $790,000. That's five out of the last six weeks where the average sales price has been above $800,000. Months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months, that's considered a seller's market. But the closer you get to zero, the more aggressive of a seller's market that it is. This week, months of inventory is up to 2.16 from last week's 2.09 months. Now the 2.16 months this week is compared to 1.76 months this week last year. This is a new record high for the months of inventory for the single family market since I've actually started keeping track of the data back in 2022. Another week of a softening market. And to be clear, I'm not saying the market is weak for sellers. It's just softening. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, that it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now onto the condo market. We have 2,556 condos on the market as of Monday. Now the inventory gains continue to be steady. This is 25.5% more than inventory levels on the market just 28 days ago. Wow. Look at that. It happened. We now have 429 more units on the market today than today last year. Meanwhile, we have 563 more condos on the market compared to the inventory levels back in 2022 and 44 units higher than inventory levels back in 2021. 
Now, a couple of weeks ago, I called my shot and I said that we were going to surpass inventory levels of 2021 sometime in May. I didn't expect it to happen so quickly. Now, there were 673 condos that came on the market last week with that four week rolling average of 547 units. Now, the 673 units listed was 89 units or 15.2% more than the 584 condos that came on the market the same week back in 2023. This was a big number for new listings. And ultimately, this is the main driver for that inventory growth in the condo market. Because this week, we put 494 units under a grid. Now, the 494 condo sales was 32 units or 6.1% less than last year when we put 526 units under a grid. With that four week rolling average, that's 431 units. So 15.2% more listings that came on the market when compared to this week last year while selling 6.1% fewer condos. The condo pendings to new listing ratio was 89.7%. What's interesting is that the condo market's actually seeing the opposite of the single family market. This ratio is increasing in the condo market, 89.7% this week, 87.8% last week, 85% two weeks ago. The average for the last four weeks is 84.5% compared to 91.2% for weeks uh, five through eight. Now, there were 421 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $708,000 and a median sales price of $550,000. Now, the same week last year, there were 242 condos that sold. So, sales levels were up by 7 point, or 74%. Excuse me. Uh, real quick on both these, right? That's because this week, there was a bigger part of the last couple days of the month, which is always closing heavy for any whether it's single family condo or multi-family market it doesn't matter months of inventory actually ticked up slightly to 2.92 months from last week's 2.91 months this is compared to the months of inventory levels of 2.27 months this week last year now different week it's the same story though as this is again the highest level for months of inventory that i've seen since i started keeping this weekly data back in the beginning of 2022 any chance you can do me a huge favor can you hit that like button it's right down there believe it or not it just makes a huge difference for me as well as the channels. It just plays with that YouTube algorithm while subscribing. If you haven't done that, then I truly appreciate you considering subscribing. That's if you're liking the content, that is. Time to talk about interest rates, though. Last week was a welcome relief for home buyers. Interest rates made a significant move down. This is welcome news, but I do believe it's short lived. I do not believe the Fed will make a move anytime soon, and that rates are actually going to spike due to hot inflation levels. Now, the wild card to all that thinking actually revolves around the election, though. Now, I think I know what you're thinking, but the Fed president just said that the next move likely is to lower rates and that the timing is uncertain. He said exactly that eventually we'll have to cut rates, but monetary policy and this is a very good place right now. Now, Chairman Powell said that despite signs of inflation isn't coming down as quickly as hoped or may even be heating back up, the Fed isn't likely to raise interest rates in his response. Talk about conflicting statements there. Mind you that these are the people or idiots, whichever one you want to choose, who kept telling us that inflation was transitory. We all know that wasn't the case. Now, I put more credibility in Powell's statements. However, the issue that I see in his comments is that he's saying that inflation's heating up and that they're not going to do anything about it. Maybe that's the election day wild card right there, but let's connect some dots real quickly. If rates go down, then that's going to push more demand into the marketplace, which will push up home values. If rates stay steady as they are, and they aren't willing to do anything about inflation, then that means that the dollar becomes less and less valuable. In other words, your dollar can buy fewer and fewer goods as the prices increase, and those prices increases include housing. And that is why we saw home prices go up every year in the 1970s, even when the economy was awful and interest rates were so high. Buy now and thank yourself later. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Again, it's Jeff Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you passing along all of my contact information. Now, you can visit YouTubeRealEstateAgent.com or you can find all my contact information in the description below right down there. Until next time.